What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Chrissy Chaos. We are here. We are back in the chaos, the Los Angeles chaos. I'm wearing a shirt uh, because I've joined the Russian mafia since I've been in L.A. or the Armenian mafia. Homeless Pimp is here in the building. <laughs> Vinny up? and the kids are in the pool. We got a pool. Um, it's just good to be back in the family. I also got good, exciting news real right off the bat. Um, if you go to chrisdcomedy.com, my website, I'm back on the road, baby, starting in the summer. We got Providence, Rhode Island. We got Eatontown, New Jersey. We got Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Waukegan, Illinois, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Nashville, Tennessee. Go get those tickets, chrisdcomedy.com, all live right now. Um, and, of course, patreon.com slash chrisdcomedy, where the true chaos, the true Christians live. We've been going wild. Um, last week, I did an episode with Tom Segura. Shout out Tom Segura. Um, I did his live show, his Your Mom's House live show. Let me tell you people something, okay? If you want to throw up, laugh, shit your pants, and divorce your spouse, go sign up for the next Your Mom's House live. I mean, it's the craziest event I've ever been a part of. I sat down with them for three and a half hours, and I've... We did it two weeks ago, and I don't think I've eaten food since because every time I sit down to eat, I just think it's a small Japanese woman shitting in a sandwich because those are the videos that we watched on Your Mom's House Live. It's things that are genuinely like his show, the Your Mom's House Live, Tom Segura and Christina Pazinski's show, Christina P's show, um, is so crazy. It's so worth the $10. I can't even explain to you. And I'm not getting anything for saying this. Like, you know, I did the show. I was just a guest. I'm just genuinely like a fan. And like being a part of it was truly epic and insane. And uh, I remember you texting me before. I was like, dude. Yeah. Th that's about to be insane. Dude, it was three and a half hours went by like this. I couldn't believe how crazy and chaotic it was. Um, it was like something that like, dude, Tom Segura and Christina P are like inspirations to me. Like I want what they have. Like that's. Like literally, and all they've done, what they've done is they've just created a world for for themselves and their fans, and they're all like one big happy family, and that's what I feel like I have with you guys. We're just creating this world little by little, and, you know, we get the more Christians. The more Christians we get, the better it is, and um, it's just, you know, it's amazing. And look, dude, how about this? I know, like, you know, Pimp is going back and forth, different angles. Don't think that I've upped my game and that I live here. This is an Airbnb <laughs> that the good people at True TV have paid for. So this is not, we're going back to the rat infested apartment in Brooklyn very soon. This is also, this is like the first place I've ever stayed in. Like this is like a Jewish, like a big time, like, I don't know if it's like a Hasidic Jewish house, but it's like, it's like every TV we turned on when we first got here, all the subtitles were in Hebrew. It was all in Hebrew. Really? Yeah, and then there's that thing outside the door, like that thing that's on an angle that you're supposed to touch when you walk in. But I'm not Jewish, so I don't know if, like, if I touch it, like, I don't know what to do. Like, do I just turn into a Jew? I don't know what happens because I'm telling the kids not to touch it unless they want to explore Judaism. If they want to be Jews, I don't care. Like, I'm one of those parents where, like, whatever my kids want to do, like, I was born and raised Catholic and I'm you know, whatever, like, the Catholic tattoos on my body. But, like, my mom, like, made me become Catholic, and I don't necessarily feel like I don't want my kids to do that. Like, whatever, if my kids, whatever religion they want to do, like, I'm, honestly, man, I'm going to be honest with you right now, pimp. If Delilah said she wanted to, like, go on a jihad, I'd be okay with it, as long as she knows what she's getting into. Wow, you're really, that's open-minded of yeah, you. Yeah, dude. What yeah. religion would you switch to? If I could switch to any religion other than being Catholic, I'd probably either go Buddhist because I could stick gerbils up my ass like Richard Gere, or maybe I'd go I'd go um, Rastafarian. That's what I do. I'd go Rastafarian, dude. I, that's what I that's I think because it just seems fun, man. They're all open. You get to draw you 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 grow out your hair. I think with Rastafarians, they grow out their hair in the dreadlocks until their dad dies. Is that true? Let, let's look it up, but I yeah. mean, that, that sounds like a real Chet Hanks thing to do. <laughs> yeah, dude, ch shout out Chet Hanks. Dude, I hope, I, it'd be funny to eventually get into beef with Chet Hanks. I'd like to see a fist fight between Chet Hanks and Michael Rappaport. Oh. Just, just two, just white. Completely naked. Oh, God. I know. Dreadlocks are not for style. According to the Old Testament scripture, Rastas, Rastas, believe one should not cut the, their hair because it is where the strength lies. Dreadlocks for, form naturally over time. 
Yeah, do dreadlocks have? Can't they? There's no way you can't wash them though, right? So there's no way they could smell good. I don't know. I never investigated. Um, I still kind of feel like a man with dreadlocks. Still, their hair probably still smells better than your beard, pimp. Oh, a hundred percent, dude. My beard is. Pimp got here last night on a flight. How are your allergies out here? I don't really have allergies. Dude, my allergies are, I've, ne- I, my, my, I don't know if you can see, but like it got better. Dude, my blood vessel blew in my eye, blew out in my eye from itching my eye because of how crazy the pollen is out here. And dude, let me tell you something, the good people of Los Angeles since I've been out here. Here's why I know New York I understand now why you have to pay the property taxes higher. You know, the property taxes are higher in a place like New York. It's because of the convenience. Even LA, which is a great city. I, I really do like Los Angeles. You know, everyone's been cool so far. And, and obviously, we have a beautiful place. Um, and by the way, let me just clarify something. True TV paid for one fucking month of this Airbnb. I had to pay for the second month. So, so actually, I want to say, fuck you, True TV. You couldn't pay for the whole thing. You only paid for a damn month, and you gave me no hair and makeup department. I'm hosting a TV show. I'm criticizing TV shows. You're making me buy my own clothes. I just keep buying shirts like this and wearing Lululemon pants. Every episode of this show, I'm literally wearing a bullshit $9.99 T-shirt or button-down with athleisure. I mean, we have to do a director's commentary for Patreon. Oh, uh, listen, 1,000%. When the True TV show comes out, we will do director's commentary. I would tell you all the behind-the-scenes shit, all, like, the shit that happens at patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. You got to join to get it in. Um, also, shout-out at Patreon. I want to just shout-out the new segment that we've been doing. It's been amazing, and it's been so helpful. Um, TT's mailbag or TT's she mailbag where you can send in questions for TT. And what we want to do is we want to even up that and we want you to email the questions or email a video of you asking the question to Chrissy Chaos Podcast at gmail.com. Chrissy Chaos Podcast at gmail.com is the email. So email us questions and email us videos. We want to get videos of you guys asking us questions as a part of our show. That's what we want to do. We want to really meet the fans that way. So Chrissy Chaos Podcast at gmail.com. Email us a video of you asking a question. It could be truly about anything. It'd be a question for TT. It could be a question for me, my physical therapy background, state capitals, whatever you guys want to know, what size butt cheeks I have. And also, we should say that uh, TT's mailbag is going to be on the regular episodes. We're going to cut to TT in a little bit here. Yes, so TT's mailbag will air every week. We're going to try to do this every week on uh, the podcast. The tame ones. The, the ones where TT goes a little too crazy is going to go on Patreon. Yeah, so when, so if, if TT, we, we filmed a lot with her, and, and she's great. And as I said, ChristyComedy.com, click well, where it says new merch. Click that merch button, buy a t-shirt for TT. All the proceeds of that are going to keep, continue her estrogen replacement therapy. So make sure we want to keep TT's tits alive. We're paying for TT's tits with the t-shirt. So um, uh, so, so go there. Um, and yeah, dude, we, li- we love TT so much. She's, she's become such an integral part of the show that I just, I, I wanted to get, we wanted to get her involved. So we got these TT's mailbag questions or TT's she mailbag questions. We asked the questions and the ones that are safe for TV will be right here. At, at the show every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Eastern time. The ones that are crazy, only at patreon.com. Yeah, I have Comedy. one already in mind. Somebody asked if TT's going to keep the penis. So that one's, <laughs> that one's only on Patreon then. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, because we can't get demonetized and flagged. We're not big enough yet. Um, but, dude, it, the, the, it's the convenience in, in New York because even today, I went, I had to, when we, when we went, we went to, um, we had to take Jazz to the doctor. She had to go get a glucose test for the baby. Everything's fine. She has no gestational diabetes. Um, I feel like I have diabetes and she doesn't. Um, dude, the, because the, the Easter dinner we ate last night, so Pimp came over, you know, it was Easter. Dude, what I, I got, the pizza and pasta I got for Easter last night was the most disgusting thing I've ever, I mean, dude. Even me, who I can eat anything, was having a tough time plowing through the bullshit Italian food they have out here. Dude, I'm a pig. I couldn't even eat the pizza. I noticed you weren't even eating it. I couldn't. Dude, all the cheese slid off. We'll post that video. We'll yeah, post yeah, that yeah. video um, up at the Patreon. Um, 
you know, of, of, of what the food looked like. It was terrible. My kids didn't eat. I feel like my kids are losing weight out here because they, they don't like the food. And the Mexican food, here's the thing with LA. Here's like the beautiful game that they play out here is the Mexican food is so good, but the really good Mexican food are in such dangerous areas that you have to get through homeless people with machetes and then Mexican gangbangers. But if you can get there, you'll get the best burrito you've ever had in your life. That's the game here. And that's what I, I love. Dude, this whole city is fucking Grand Theft Auto. This in, that's why I'm wearing this shirt. This is Because I um, feel like this is a Grand Theft Auto shirt. This entire city is just Grand Theft Auto. And I got to be honest with you, I kind of love it. But the convenience is something that I can't deal with. It's not convenient as New York is. Today, I went to go get the car wash to wash the pollen and all the shit from the trees off the car because like I'm blowing out blood vessels with my sneezes. I get to the car wash... I'm like, okay. He's like, oh, ten dollars. I'm like, okay. Can we, you know, well, we, I, you know, we got to get the kids out of the car. He goes, oh no, 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 you don't get out of the car in this car wash. I'm like, okay. So we sit in the car, and then I, I'll pay whatever it is to do the inside out. So he goes, no, no, you have to vacuum it yourself. I was like, what? I have to vacuum it myself? I'll give you thirty dollars right now. Just clean my car and vacuum everything inside of it. There's God knows what the kids have been eating. There's dust and pollen everywhere. You know, whatever. One of my kids like stepped in dog shit at the park a week ago. I haven't cleaned it because I'm just sneezing all the time. Like, just clean the car. And they're like, oh no, there's no car washes in LA do that. I'm like, what are we doing here? So now I clean the outside of my car, which is fine. Then they had another car wash. I was like, okay, let me go to another car wash. I go to another car wash. It's a hand car wash. So you have to drop your car off and come get it again in two hours. I'm like, just put my car through the toothbrush machine thing. Like, I want, I want, what, why are you hand washing my car in 2021? I mean, I kind of get it. They're just inconveniencing the hot people. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> truly just inconvenience. Yeah, the, the people here, dude, even, even Vin was saying, even Vinny was saying, like, going to her, going to her OBGYN appointments, like, all the doctors ask about is, like, cosmetic stuff. Even her own OBGYN, she goes, ooh, she was like, oh, you, uh, you, you know, you don't have too many stretch marks. That's good. And she was like, yeah, you know, it's my third child, and I've been lucky. She was like, all right. She's like, well, you know, once you get those stretch marks, we'll take care of them. She was like, I feel like stretch marks are okay. It's like a part of my body. And they were like, oh, yeah, sure. They were like, whatever you want, but, like, we can get rid of those stretch marks right away and all they're doing is she's going to these appointments and they're just talking to her from what she's telling me because I can't go in because of fucking Kovi Wovi she's telling me they're talking about the baby for like a minute and then mostly focusing on what things she needs to improve on her body and they're just trying to get vacuum cleaners into her body to suck the fat out that's what this city is and it's just I mean whatever dude like it's just a different place where like even even Vin is like, I thought I was a beautiful girl. I'm like, no, 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 you are. This is th this city. Th th their business is to depress you and make you more insecure, so they can cut up more shit and you can that you could spend more money. The business in here's the business. The business of Los Angeles is to depress you and make you insecure. That's their business. So anybody that says like sunshine, avocados, the beach, all that stuff is true. But the business here is insecurity and depression. That's the business. That's the Hollywood system. That's the Hollywood system. So thank God I'm not really in it because I have a show on True TV because that like doesn't count, you know? So, um, but dude, I've been having a good time out here. You know, we made it work for the Chrissy Chaos episodes as best we could. I want to shout out Andrew Santino and the great people at the Whiskey Ginger Studio for letting us uh, come in and, and do Chrissy Chaos from there. And also all the LA podcasts that I've been on. I mean, I've been on... You know, the Whitney Cummings show co-hosted The King and the Sting for three weeks because Theo Vaughn's clinically insane. Um, you know, we've we've done uh, Tom Segura's live show, Burt Kreischer podcast, which is coming out. We've done, you know, everybody's been so kind letting me in, you know, and it's been uh, it's just been awesome to get out there and uh, and and do these things. And we have I have sent a DM, by the way, I've DM now twice for, for I'm thinking a perfect Chrissy Chaos guest. Two guests I've DM'd twice, and I'm very, very close to calling in favors from my agent, which I don't want them to be involved in this podcast at all, but I'd be willing to pay, you know, give them some commission if they can make this happen. Two great guests I'm thinking for this podcast. One, Gary Busey. Two, Charlie Sheen. So I'm trying as hard as I can to get... Dude, could you imagine if I could get... Charlie Sheen and Magic Johnson as guests on my podcast. Who has more AIDS on their podcast than Chrissy D? That's what it is. And Vinny has just walked in. Vin, more AIDS on the podcast. Speak it to the mic if you want to talk. I'm I said I'm trying. No, speak it to the mic because people can't hear you if you don't speak it to the mic. P 
people. By the way, what Vinny's wearing Whitney Cummings. Uh, uh, Vinny's wearing Whitney Cummings merch. Bat bat bat. Pan shout out Whitney Cummings for letting us you letting us use your pool. Um, and it's been great. Uh, my daughter said that the only way she thinks I'll ever be successful is if I, is if I dye my hair blue. So Antifa, I'm signing up. Um, I was saying that if I could get Charlie Sheen on the podcast and Magic Johnson, there would got be a it, lot of it, AIDS it. on the podcast, and that'd be good. Remember, okay. I took a picture with Magic Johnson when you when you were in Florida You're in Orlando. Welcome. Huh? You're welcome because you came you came to help out with the convention. I came out by the convention. You know what? That was a big day too. I met Magic Johnson and I found out I was 100 percent the father of the baby. Remember that? That wasn't that day. That was that day. I found out in the in the in the hotel room in Florida because Vinny and I didn't really know each other. So even she agreed. She was like, you know, like we've just been out here, you know, like we've both been single. So like let's just make sure. And Found, I knew you always it. make me sound so good. Why? Like you, Does that sound bad? Like, right, edit that part I mean, out. Edit. Yeah, you made it sound like I was out there just like no, raw dogging you, everybody. No, you weren't raw dogging everybody and you were certain that it was mine, but you were just like, you know, like fine, if you want to be safe, I get it. I get it because you were dating someone. You were cheating on your boyfriend with, with me. No, no, no. We were, no, no I wasn't... No, he wasn't like no, my boyfriend, though. Out. He wasn't my boyfriend. That really, you know, I got to be honest with you. You know what, actually, you know, can I be very honest with you? Because I only now, by the way, Vinny's in here. The kids, the kids are, are in, the, yeah, the kids are screaming in the pool. So just know if there's an accident with one of our children, I'm doing it for the podcast. <laughs> just know that we're putting our, no, we could see them right there through the glass doors. The kids are fine. Uh, uh, Delilah has her life vest on, and Tristan's just talking to the floats in the pool. Um, <laughs> so... So, um, um, just recently, Vin, very recently, I'm talking about like six months ago. What are you looking ago. up? Cheating? No, she didn't. I was just kidding. <laughs> just, just recently, was I able to, was just recently, was I, cause, cause, cause I remember like how much like I like how strong my feelings were for you when we first met that when you, no, seriously, when you were like, oh, but like, you're kind of like talking to someone, like not that it was an official relationship. And I remember there was a picture of you and him on your Instagram, like way back. And I would still up until like six months ago, look back at that picture and get like a pain in my chest. I don't but, think, oh, I never put a picture up of yes, him. Yes, there, there was a picture of you and your friends and him. And I know, I know it was him. Cause you said where I forgot wherever he was from and you described him. It's like, oh, that's, I know it's fucking him. So, um, so just recently did that, did that like stop hurting me? You know, it took a while. You to didn't just, know me. I know I didn't know you, but I loved you. But I knew, but I knew, um, uh, what's this, what's the Savage Garden song? I knew I loved you before I met you. I can't you. stand that shirt that you're wearing, Why? The I'm, in the, I'm wearing the Armenian Mafia you out look here. look like, I know you, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what Well, this is what, what happens like. when, I mean, I'm hosting a freaking TV show and they don't have a freaking wardrobe department. What so is this the, is the type of shit I buy. What is mess on the couch? You couldn't clean that up before you started recording? No, because the kids just left it here. And also because I don't want the kids to run in, so I put the peanut butter magic spoon cereal in there. I figure they have, they have nut allergies. At least, you know, they, they won't come near it because they'll oh blow God. up like a scallop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, we were just talking about how the doctors are weird to you. Yeah, we're, I was telling him how the oh doctor. Because what did the doctor say to you about the stretch the marks out here? The first thing. Okay, so the first thing she said was, and she's very nice, very sweet. But the first thing she said was, oh my goodness, you have no stretch marks. Congratulations. Wow. And I was like, okay, and now how's my baby? Like, how, right. like, yeah, let me know what's going on in there. Right. Yeah, no, it's crazy. Uh, and it's, it's crazy weird. because they're very superficial. Out yeah. Here. It's just like they're mechanics. Yeah. But here's the thing that Vinny hasn't said is because I saw the thing hit my credit card is she is scheduled a um, breast enhancement uh, surgery while we're out here. Enhancement? So, enhancement. No. What do, you, what do you think you're getting those removed? No chance. Absolutely. Vin. 100%. Listen, I'm no. Look, I know you've been seeing like really, really, really large boobs all over the place around here and you're into it, but that's not for me. Sorry. So now, so you're going to allow T.T. Jerry to have the biggest tits in the family. That's okay. He can have the biggest <laughs> tits, the biggest ass. That's fine. He's got the biggest, now he's got the biggest ass and the biggest tits. Okay. What is she doing? Okay. She, stop jumping off the edge like that. You're going to hit your head on the back off they're the float. Playing, they're playing Wipeout. Oh, they're playing the game. all the floaties. Shout out Wipeout. Good show. We've been watching my family with John Cena and Nicole Byer. Nicole Byer, good friend, good friend of mine Maybe Nicole Byer would be great on the show if she has the time she's very busy she's awesome I she's love awesome. her remember when, we, when Nicole Byer yeah. and I did a college show together once a couple of years ago when Delilah was like two years old and Vin came Delilah to the show her, yeah. and we had a good we had a great time maybe I'll, I'll reach out to Nicole Byer that she'd be awesome um but um yeah so 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 you know since we've been out here I think Vin now is finally settling in because the first house we were in she didn't really love but now she's in like a mini Hebrew palace 
and she's finally starting to feel better about no, it's LA. Like a, it's like a Spanish novella house. But it's but but Jewish people own it. It's like a Spanish. It's like a Spanish Hasidic novella <laughs> temple. That's what it is. It's a I Spanish feel like Hasidic I'm in a novella right now. Novella. Like I want to come down those stairs in a gown. By the way, it's like very dramatic. What and trip again? How about this? What? Yeah, so she could slip again. How oh, about here this? We go. Yeah, here I we go. Here we go. Here we go. You ready for this? Couple of days ago, the first day we get into the house, we wanted to have an Easter egg hunt for the kids. So we go out at six o'clock in the morning. I'm half asleep. She's like, "We got to get up. You got to help me set up these eggs." I'm like, "You just set up the eggs. You're the mom." And she was like, no, the kids need Easter eggs. I'm like, you look like an Easter egg with the baby. Like, let's just paint your stomach. Like, why do we have to do this shit? We did that already without you. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> so, so we get up six o'clock in the morning. She's, she comes out with big ass pajama pants over her toes and a sweatshirt. <laughs> I'm go unloading the car. I got the boxes of Easter eggs, right? You know, like the, the plastic Easter eggs. I, Vin's walking in front of me. It's pitch, it's, you know, <laughs> sun is rising. I see the pants, like, I was I'm just about to say, like, hey, pull your pants no, up. You I see, she hits. She hits the first step. I see her, it was like, literally, I've never seen a fall take this long. <laughs> she was falling for, like, 45 minutes. She fell for the entire, like, just did. think about, from, from now until the podcast is over, that's how long <laughs> Vin was falling. And it was so scary for me and for her because I'm, you know, she's protecting the baby. She's seven months pregnant and I could see her. So this is where like a motherly instinct kicks in where I was like, oh my God. She literally, to protect her stomach, because she was holding a box, dove to the side and smashed her head right off the concrete wall oh outside the door. Like it was like scary. And she got up and... She got up and like ran in the house and like was bent over. So I knew she was okay. So she got pissed. You at me knew because- I was okay. I was holding my face, thinking my eyeball <laughs> fell out of my head. I know. I thought eyeball fell out. And then I hear, then I hear, I hear the car lock. I'm yeah. like this. That's girl. that's why she was she mad at me because the first because the first thing the I did before I looked at her head was I I hit the lo- lock on my car because I'm still thinking like New York like yo if we leave the car unattended <laughs> unlocked people could steal our shit so in an in an emergency in an actual emergency I locked the car I locked our valuables first and then I attended it's like when it, if a plane's gonna crash I put the mask on and then I help you I locked the car <laughs> I locked the car and then I helped you and she got mad at me for that. But, dude, we, can we post a picture of your egg head on the Patreon or no? I already posted a picture. Oh, you posted a pic? Well, you're not supposed to do that. Make people pay $5 for it. No, I'm kidding. You got, but my, but my, uh, my picture was a little, like, filtered, though. So yeah, it was can, filtered. Like, we can post the raw can unedited. Post well, we can just real put, no, let's just put it in the episode. Just put it in the episode. We're going to put it in the episode right now. Just put it in. Um, that um, makes me nervous. But, but it was one of those things where I was like, oh, shit, like, she now, like, she must have felt like the kids didn't get enough for Easter, so she just put an Easter egg on her head. And then I wanted to do a bit where, like, the kids were painting the Easter eggs, and then I was painting her head, and she would be like, no, because it legit looks like, like, because, like, you know, her eye and her head, it's like, it's very, like, even though, like, that's exactly what happened, right? She, it does look like it could have been misconstrued as do I beat her, but the truth is everybody knows in this relationship, Vinny beats me. Oh, my God. I would love to beat you up. I think by I think before it's all said and done, Vin, you will murder me in my sleep. I think before it's all Don't said and done. Don't say that because I know people have said that before in the past, and that is not true. I am not capable of murdering you or anybody. You actually aren't. No, no, you could murder someone. You told me, you told me one day you could no. murder someone. You were, we were drunk in Aruba. What are you talking about? You said oh we were drinking Cosmic Maltons watching Don't the sunset, say that. and you looked over me and you said, I could kill a human being. And I was like, oh Don't- boy. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was on JetBlue. I was like, is there a flight home? Wait, I gotta get a JetBlue. Yeah. We were in Aruba. Then I found your body. I know. There you go. I know. Plan. The new Good Natalie plan. Holloway. No, stop it. I know you can't, dude. You know when you go to Aruba, we did comedy in Aruba. That they said if you make an, a Natalie Holloway joke on stage, it's punishable by a fine, imprisonment. Wait, Tristan and- was just holding Delilah under the wire. Tristan, what? What are you doing? Don't hold your sister under the water. What the <laughs> fuck is wrong with him? I, I love what kids think is funny. It's like, yeah, let me just hold her under the water. He gets it from his mother. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Exactly what Pimp just said. The way the way Tristan was just holding Delilah under the water is how you would hold me under the water. Tristan gets his killer instinct from you. Well, no, he said that she, and she said that she told him to do that. <laughs> no, but make sure they don't do that, though. Let's, no, yeah. I'm worried. So yeah, maybe just. Psychoticness comes right. from you. All right, so you want to just go out there then? 
you could be more on the next podcast. We're gonna do. We're gonna do. Oh, by the way, real quick, just this is. And so we're, we're just gonna end it there. You call me a murderer, and then that's it. <laughs> yeah, clip it. Here's what we're gonna do: is we're gonna do Chrissy Chaos After Dark, where me and Pimp are gonna take edibles, and I'm gonna do the show on edibles. Chrissy Chaos After Dark. Oh, from no, the I don't upstairs. wanna deal with that shit again. Why? Oh yeah, because you're gonna freak out, and then I have to calm you down. Oh my god, oh, the my last god. time on edibles was so. What is your? Because here's. Quickly, in a nutshell, I don't know if some... I've told this story before, but basically what happened was is I uh, shout out Opie from the Opie and Anthony show and Sherrod Smalls gave me a chocolate... They gave me a chocolate... Can I take edibles? Edible bar. No, I can't yeah, do that right now. Tell me, Google, if pregnant no, women I mean can take right edibles. I'm pregnant. Let's Pam? see if pregnant women can take edibles. <laughs> Dude, what's the difference? I mean, yeah. I feel like you can do it. I mean, you've been going in the pool. Like, Google you've been it. doing Google shit. It. Like, you've been eating raw fish. Like, you've been crazy this pregnancy because it's your third Over kid. Over easy eggs. <laughs> yeah, I know. We went to a restaurant the other day, and some 16-year-old waitress, she ordered avocado toast with over easy eggs, and she saw Jasmine's belly. She was like, can you do that? And then... I was like, yeah, yeah. Like, what are you doing? Like, are you, you're just eating raw I eggs forgot. now because she thinks she's a freaking Wonder Woman. But that's annoying of the waitress. I yeah. think that's really annoying. I know, yeah. right? Like, how do you know? Delilah I'm is not, legitimately. Like, you know, she's belly. trying to backflip under the water. Like, she's going to hit her head off that. Um, so I took. We took edibles. We took edibles uh, at the Islanders game, and I was supposed to eat half of a half of a square. That's what they told me. Oh, uh, that's what I found out later. But Sherrod and Opie didn't tell me that, so I just ate a full chocolate bar, like a full 100% weed-riddled chocolate candy bar. And um, and it hit me. And you don't know how much you took. I don't know how much I took, but it hit me in the Islanders game. The first period buzzer went off. It was like, Burr! and then I thought somebody threw a spear through the right side of my head and cut off the left side of my body. And I popped up in the middle of the Barclays Center where the Islanders play. And I was like, I'm having a stroke. I'm having a stroke. And I thought I was having a stroke for three hours. And because I literally couldn't feel the left side of my body because I think I forgot that I had taken the edibles and my anxiety went like through the roof and I genuinely convinced myself and I remember texting Mike Cannon. He was like, dude, just smile, man. Just smile. Let breathe. I got, I took a cab. It was freezing. I was on, uh, I remember the cab. I got off like 30 blocks before our, our apartment it was freezing cold. I threw my jacket in a garbage can in the middle of January, and then I knocked on her door with the kids. And then what do you remember when I knocked on the no, door? you didn't knock on my door. You practically kicked it down. Right. What do you remember? You came in sweating. You were red. You were panicked. And you're just like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know how to feel. I'm like, what is wrong with you? What's, like, what's happening? Were you drugged? You're like, no, I took an edible. I was like, oh, so you did this on purpose to yourself. Yeah. Then I don't even remember what, what happened. Well, between, you being but a former putting, drug addict, you had all you had all the freaking tips. You were like, drink warm milk, take a shower, zone I didn't out. Stand you. I'm a listen murderer, to, I'm a drug addict, Kesha. I'm a cheater. Just, <laughs> yeah. Why are you with me? What? I'm a murderer, cheater, drug addict. What's happening here? Because this is because I'm because I'm Chrissy Chaos. This is what this is the only way I could come. <laughs> Wait, why do you drink milk? Is that a thing? You I don't drink know. milk when you. Oh, I was you just telling him to do everything because <laughs> he was annoying me. No, but what? All did right, you so I'm putting I'm putting Delilah to sleep. He comes into her room. He kneels by the little toddler bed that she's laying in, crying, like <laughs> softly, <laughs> softly weeping. And I'm like, "What is wrong? Get the fuck out of her room! What is wrong with you?" And then he like went to go take a shower. I was like, "Go take a cold shower." I thought that would like you know wake him up. And that's it. And you took a shower, and then. You were fine. Yeah. And I was fine. No, but you came in like freaking out. Like I thought somebody was chasing you to kill you. Yeah. I can see him freaking out completely. And we're going to do and it he all. He was so obnoxious. And we're going to do it all again tonight. Chrissy Chaos <laughs> After Dark, baby. You're not staying here. What do you mean I'm not staying here? I'll stay in Pimp's room then. We got a, <laughs> yeah, we got a private room. Pimp's got his own private bedroom. That's like a little bit removed from the house. That's where I'm sleeping tonight oh, if, we Eddie, if we do Eddie's. If we do Eddie's. I want to call him Eddie's. Let's do Eddie's, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, the Chris and Eddie show where it's just me on edibles. Dude. I have a rough weed story. I, I landed in LA. I was supposed to photograph Tyler, the creator. Okay. And my Uber driver is just this cool lady. Right. And then she just like, she heard me talking about it. Like, oh, I dropped me off at the dispensary. And she goes, well, I have a blunt if you want to smoke with me. Okay. So then I just smoked weed with my Uber driver. <laughs> but I was still, like, gassy from the plane. <laughs> so I'm smoking weed with her. And then all of a sudden, I shit my pants. No. What? <laughs> <laughs> you shit went, your pants in the back of the Uber? No, we, were, we, no, we pulled over and we had, like, a, a stoner picnic on the, this oh side of this road. God. And I just shit my That's pants hilarious. with this cute Uber driver. And I was like... 
I'm just gonna walk it out from here. <laughs> <laughs> what did you just try to push out a fart and you? And you no, you, well, the airplane made me like gassy, and then all of a sudden I got so relaxed. Did you show up to Tyler the Creator's photo shoot with shit in your pants? I showed up to my nice Airbnb with shit in my pants. Wow, dude! And you're the kind of person you probably didn't even take a shower. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, none. Wow. You always look kind of homeless. So they're like, are you sure you're renting this yeah. Airbnb? I went like... full character. <laughs> oh my God. Well, yeah, we're going to do the edible sign. I'm looking forward to it. I've been having fun out here. How's your experience been out here so far, Ben? I love it. Except you do for, love like, it. like the superficial, like. Could you live here, here or there. no? I don't know if I could live here. Here's the thing I'm looking to buy a house now. It's April. So what does that mean? raining there's you know april fools you know and what's the big thing taxes you got to pay your taxes nobody wants to deal with it policygenius.com just makes it all better okay because what it does is is it balances it out you can consider shopping for home and auto insurance okay you can do that you can shop for home and auto insurance you can get coverage for all these things you policy genius you know what they did they saved customers $1,055 per year by reshopping their home and auto coverage. That's what they did. So if you are just sitting there and you're like, ah, I don't like my home and auto coverage. It kind of sucks. I feel like I'm paying too much. I'm, I'm looking at my taxes at the end of the year and I'm like, ugh, what am I doing? Policy Genius is the way to go. PolicyGenius.com. All you do is go to PolicyGenius.com. They compare rates from America's top insurers from Progressive to Allstate, and they find you your lowest quotes. So if you go to policygenius.com, you have to know 100% that whatever that number is, is the absolute lowest you're going to pay for home and auto insurance anywhere in the world because policygenius.com does the work for you. They, you will not leave their website feeling like a fool. They save the customers $1,055 per year com compared to their current home and auto policies. That's a lot of money. I'm telling you, go to Policy Genius when it comes to insurance. It's nice to get it right. Get it right, get it tight. PolicyGenius.com. That's their slogan. Get it right, get it tight. <laughs> PolicyGenius.com. If you want to get the lowest home and auto insurance, do it. I Like I said, I'm looking to buy a house right now. I'm on PolicyGenius.com every day looking for the lowest rates. So we haven't found them yet, but baby, they're coming. PolicyGenius.com. Go there, get it right, get it tight. You got Bush? You probably do have a Bush. I know sometimes people like a little bush, but it's not the 1970s, okay? I like to be Chrissy Bald Eagle because I'm an American patriot. No more bush, okay? Here's how you're going to get your bush gone. You go to manscaped.com slash chaos, and you get exclusive 20% off discount from our good friends at Manscaped. You, they are literally anti-pubic hair. They get, <laughs> they remove your bush, dude. They, the products are life-changing. I'm telling you, the, I mean, from the lawnmower 3.0, now they got the perfect package 3.0. A lot of you guys out there are like, why isn't my package perfect? I'm like, because you're not going to Manscaped, dude. Look at this thing. You got hair everywhere. It looks disgusting. It's hideous. Not me, dude. My, my penis and balls look are so perfect looking right now because of the products at Manscaped that it kind of looks like a vagina. It almost <laughs> looks like I'm um, transit because the vagina is beautiful. Genitalia, you know, penis and balls, not so much. But with Manscaped, it kind of looks like I have a vagina. Manscaped.com slash chaos, 20% off the products. I'm telling you, the perfect package, by the way, the perfect package, uh, the perfect package kit comes with the essential lawnmower 3.0. That's the, the lawnmower 3.0 is, I mean, I, I constantly rebuy it. It's waterproof cordless body trimmer, and a ton of other liquid formulations to round out your grooming routine. So you need to get this perfect package. First of all, it's a great gift for, you know, your dad or your husband or your boyfriend, or, you know, even if you think, you know, even if you're dating a woman who's a little hairy, go to Manscaped. I mean, it works on women's hair, but it's just, you know, we think men are usually hairier, but 20% off plus free shipping. Because a lot of these companies, they say, oh, we get a discount, but then you got to pay for the shipping, not Manscaped. 20% off plus free shipping, manscaped.com slash chaos. That's C-H-A-O-S. I'm telling you, it's the best thing you'll ever do. Keep the balls clean. Keep them free. Keep them open. That's what I do. The, the, uh, the lawnmower 3.0, best thing, no more bush. We voted bush out years ago. He's not coming back now. <laughs> Let Get rid of the bush. It's not bush season. Summer's coming up. You need a nice, trim, bald eagle manscaped.com slash chaos 20% off.
Some people may know uh, that I have a second kid on the way, and that second child wouldn't have been possible without my good friends at Blue Chew because I could not get my dick up for about a year because I was just stressed out, especially with quarantine. I just had a limp penis. I mean, Mike Tyson could have come and pinched me in the dick. It would have been dead on the mat, counted out, <laughs> TKO. But then BlueChew.com comes along. All of a sudden, I'm popping boners again. Have sex with Vin. Now we're having another baby. Due date July 4th. Going to be beautiful. Blue Chew, and what I loved about Blue Chew is nobody knew... Nobody knew I was taking these male enhancements because they were coming in discreet packaging. Even Vinny, who's got the passwords to my cell phone, had no idea <laughs> that BlueChew.com was coming to the house, that Blue Chews were coming to the house. All you have to do is go to BlueChew.com and put in the promo code CHAOS, C-H-A-O-S. Guess what? All you do is pay the $5 shipping. You get the first month free. BlueChew.com, promo code CHAOS. Just pay the $5 shipping. You get the first month free. I did it to myself. Do you understand? I used my own promo code to get my PP up. That's how much I love and believe in this product. Blue Chews are awesome. It's all, you know, um, uh, you, know you, you talk to. The experience was great. I mean, a healthcare practitioner came on on the computer, asked me a couple of questions. I answered them honestly. Uh, what, nothing embarrassing was great. They said, okay, the package is going to be on the way. Ask me a couple of questions about my health, answer them, and that's it. And then next thing you know, a couple of days later, I got the blue chew packaging. I pop one. I had a I had a boner for like five for so long. Ask Pimp. I was like, dude, how do I get how do I get this thing down? I mean, my penis, it was insane. It was insane. I had to go to eat. I was taking Easter pictures with the Easter bunny with a full boner. I didn't need to, it, dude. It wasn't even about staying six feet away. I didn't need to say, I didn't need to do that because my boner had me six feet away from people because of bluechew.com. I'm telling you, if you're having any issues, look no further than Blue Chew. It changed my life. It's an online prescription service. No visits to the doctor's office, no awkward convos, no waiting in line at the pharmacy, and it ships right to your door in a discreet package, which is what I love about it the most. Bluechew.com. Use the promo code CHAOS. First month free. Just pay the $5 shipping. Get your dick up. It's great. Why? I mean, I don't know. I love the weather. The weather's like super cool. Like it's perfect every day. And you like that? I love that. See, I don't I, need winter. I, I need variety. Need... I feel like variety no. of seasons oh, do you? gives you character. Variety of seasons. Good. Thank you I for I need clarifying. variety of seasons and varieties of Magic Spoon cereals. Go to magicspoon.com slash chaos. Ugh, get $5 dollars off. Or magicspoon.com slash hey baby. Get, get $5 that shirt dollars off. From anyway. Huh? Where did that come from? I don't know. I got, they, they gave me no, they said you got to buy your own wardrobe. So I went and just started buying things for literally $9.99. I was buying off the rack at Target. You look what like do a you waiter to, from Miami. Like, I, like what is this? Do, do I look muscular in it? Sure. I got to go. Okay. Oh, here's, here's Delilah soaking. Yeah, stay out there with them. I mean, literally. No, I mean, just because, you know, I got a freaking, I'm trying to do the podcast. Well, don't go in there. Okay. Sorry. Bye, Vin. She's watching the kid. The kids are in the pool, but she's got a life vest on. Delilah's okay. And Tristan, Tristan literally just talks to the floats. That's what he does. Good he's, kid. He's a crazy kid. Great kid. Dude, that's a wild story that you shit your pants. I mean, one time I, one time I, uh, I was at a, like a food expo thing, like, you know, some, something, some like thing at, uh, in, uh, off the West side highway in Manhattan. And same thing. I was eating all this foods and I farted and I sharded. And instead of just like going home, because it was like I was having fun, there was like a few more hours left, I just went in the bathroom, took off my shitty underwear and just threw them in the garbage can. So some, like I just had like a shit, I just was like, I'm just gonna, you know, I wiped my ass, I, I, I went, I wet toilet paper, I just cleaned my asshole out a little bit and then I just was like, I'm just gonna go commando. Yeah, I mean, I'm not ashamed of it. I feel like we're in a golden age of shitting your pants right now. Oh, 100%. There's no bathrooms anywhere. No, nothing. There's no, ba you can't do anything. And it, yeah, and, and, and little by little, LA is starting to open up. I heard New York is opening up, which is good, but it's kind of like, you know, even like with the vaccines and stuff, I'm kind of just like, if you, it should just be, listen, if you're vaccinated, you can go back to what it was in 2019. But it's like, so I'm vaccinated. I still got to wear the mask. I still got to maintain distance. I still got to do all this bullshit. So what's the point of the vaccine then? Just when I'm vaccinated and clear, just fucking let me go crazy, you know? Especially in the gym. I almost died today. Dude, okay, let's just get... What? Sick house? What are you talking about a sick house? Vin just said sick house. What? Come in and speak, speak, to, speak in the mic quickly. Vin is saying sick house. I'm sorry. Um, Jill, Jill just sent us like an amazing house. An amazing house? We found our house. We found our house? Okay, great. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the house. yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, I found the house. <laughs> I'm not reading your lips. <laughs> found a house. We're trying to, we're looking to buy a house, but it's like, okay. In LA, no. No, not in LA, back in New York to buy a freaking house. I'm like, okay. Yeah, I love Vin will send me things like, oh, it's this price, it's that price. I'm like, are you going to fucking, are you going to start like teaching more exercise classes? Because like, I'm out here, I mean, I'm doing my podcast, I'm doing Chrissy Chaos and Hey Babe, but it's like, you're sending me shit like I'm LeBron James. Like, what is, what do you think? I, I'm, I'm trying, I mean, I know I wear a lot of athleisure pants, but I mean, you're sending me shit with like private tennis courts. I'm like, Vin, just, you think just because I'm white, I can just show up and they'll give me a house? That's what she thinks. Dude, I genuinely thought when Vinny fell, like I was like, maybe she's trying to kill our baby because she's racist and hates whites. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> and any white that she just wants to get rid of. Dude, so get to, we're getting, let's, let's go quickly to the Anxiety Tuesday segment of the show um, where we talk about mental health and how we can help mental health. Pimp and I helped our mental health today. We took a class. It's called Barry's. I'm sure it's it's like a worldwide thing. I'm sure you guys have heard of Barry's Boot Camp. We went to Barry's. went to the one in Studio City. And Pimp almost died. 20 minutes on the treadmill, 20 minutes on the floor. And it was so funny because this guy, who was actually a really nice guy. He was fine. Um, you know, he was just like, he would be like, okay, you know, and seven, eight, nine. Move the treadmill up to 10. And me and Pimp were just at 3.5 the entire... Every time he was like, it's going to get... Sprint it out! Sprint it out! Me and Pimp just walked. I mean, we would go from 3.5 to 3.7 and just walk it out a little bit. There was a girl in the class who literally... It's like she just came to the class naked. I would think, like, she was naked. Was like, crazy. every part of... Like, I know what that woman looks like naked now because she was in the class naked. And this... And, and it's weird because Pimp and I were talking about this... On the way home, which, um, you know, dude, I was so close, by the way, to just pulling off and going through an In-N-Out burger, but I, I figure we'll get that for dinner. Um, but, it, I mean, she was just, like, literally naked doing a class. Oh, here, here comes Vin now. Um, <laughs> on cue, Vin coming. But she literally, I was like, why did you even, like, you just came to the gym. She was a fully, it was like a, a naked woman doing, doing the class. I was like, but now I see stuff like that, and you and I were talking about this, where it's like, that's not attractive anymore. Now I look at that and I'm like, not that I feel bad for her, but I'm like, this woman would be such a humongous problem because it, think about the insecurity you have to come, you have to, the insecurity that you have to, you know, have for you to come to the gym half naked like that. Like that's for nobody else but you and the guys you attract to make their life a living fucking hell. Dude, it's like when a bear sees food in a trap and goes and eats it. What are you doing? What am I doing, dude? Yeah, like, yeah, stupid bear. Bears just need to stick to eating salmon because guess who's not in salmon anymore? Even though I'm Chrissy Omega 3's Chrissy Salmon's, me. You want to know why? I watched a documentary on Netflix called Sea Spiracy. Have you heard of this? Sea Spiracy. S E A Spiracy. Um, it's on Netflix. Vin and I watched it last night. And it's one of those things where, you know, you watch Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead or Fork Over Spoon or Knife Over Fork, whatever the other ones are. And you're like, okay, I don't eat, I don't eat red meat anymore and, and the chicken industry sucks and the beef industry sucks. But now they've showed you, because I got to be honest with you, for most of my life, I just assumed fish had no feelings. I just assumed they were just pretty much like just brain dead, just swimming through like... I didn't even think they had blood. Like, I was like, oh, it's a fish. Like, they don't care. It's a fish. Like, you know, like, whatever, dude. Like, animals have feelings, but like a fish isn't an animal. It's a fish. And I was wrong. So let me just say something. First of all, I think that it is a very, and by the way, Nikki Glaser did not pay me to say this. It is a very profound documentary, and it is really making me rethink what type of foods I want to eat and, and the way animals are treated and, and how... It, you know, what am I actually putting in my body? Because I didn't realize that, first of all, what Sea Spirit she showed you is that this is just, it's just more stuff, kind of even what's happening now, more stuff about how like big government and big corporate business just change the narrative and make the narrative whatever it is they want. So all of last year and a couple of years ago, what did we hear that was killing the oceans and the sea turtles and the sea life? Plastic straws, plastic Coke can containers or soda containers. They get stuck in the, in the sea turtles' necks and the fish's necks and they die and they drown and all that stuff. All that plastic consumption literally 
accounts for 0.003%, 0.003% of all the plastic in the ocean. So it does almost nothing. It does almost nothing to impact the life of a sea turtle or a sea mammal. 46%, 46% of the plastic in the ocean and the drama and, and the debris in the ocean and the things that kill sea life and make and truly change the course of the ocean's health is, is commercial fishing nets and commercial fishing plastic. What do you got, Vin? So you were just talking about a naked woman when I was out there and then I walk in and then you start talking about plastic in the ocean. Listen. This is the Chrissy C. Spiracy segment. So I'm Chrissy C. Spiracy. And, you know, this is what we're talking about now. So if you want to hear about the naked woman, you're going to have to go listen to the episode. Tuesdays, 11 a.m. Eastern time. YouTube.com slash Christy Comedy. Um, no, there was a woman in the gym at Barry's boot camp who was like half naked and me and Pimp were like legit disgusted by her. And it was, oh, sure. I'm sure you were disgusted. It was obscene. It was obscene. It was obscene. Uh, we were like, what? It, like, we don't, I don't want, like, I look at that and I'm like, I don't want that. Like, I What want, do you mean? Like, what was she wearing? Like booty, sh like shorts. Did like you take you, a picture? You could see like, you could see like the under flaps of her butt and a sports bra. We could see, uh, we could see the under flaps of her boobs and the under flap of her butt. Maybe she just didn't right. want to like sweat like underneath her boobs and right. butt. So she like leaves it he out. He just head butted her in the pool. So, but she's <laughs> laughing, but she loves it. Is she going to be like a professional wrestler? Like what is... I'll um, go. You can continue your stories. Uh, no, but, it, but there was no story. It was just that we're not really into that anymore, into half-naked women. I just said it was a trap. Yeah, it was a trap. It's a trap it's that a trap. I don't want to be a part of it. And we're saying it, it's like a bear. It's like a bear going for a food trap when we're like, just eat the salmon. And then we kind of went into, because I'm Chrissy Segways, we went into the sea spiracy stuff about the salmon. What do you want to make for lunch? Not... Not fish, because, so here's what happened. So 46% of its commercial fishing, that is really the problem. It's not the straws. That's all posturing bullshit. Just like when you post a picture, like, I got my vaccine, and you're still wearing them. You're all posturing. You don't really care about COVID. You don't really care about the vaccine. You care about, you're such a narcissist, insecure person. You just care about other people being like, look at what a good person I am. It's all bullshit. Same thing. With this, with this seaspiracy thing, the plastic straw plastic thing was all bullshit. The problem is commercial fishing, but commercial fishing, for the most part, is big business. It's it's countries behind it. I'm sorry to say it's mostly China. Um, I know that you can't say that. I'm not saying, uh, you know, Asian Americans. I know like they're, you know, being attacked. I know, I know. I'm not saying, I'm just saying Seaspiracy said the nation of China is, is a big proponent behind this commercial fishing. And they are, what they do is they take they take a big sea net, not only Chinese, Chinese uh, fishermen, uh, fish, fisher people, different countries, but it's happening a lot in the Asian seas, is they take these big nets and they scrape the bottom of the ocean floor and destroy all the coral reef and all the, anything in its way, it just grabs it up in a big net. It's like a big bulldozer and of course gets fish and coral and all that. And it's basically like, it's basically like just going through the Amazon rainforest and clearing up all the trees just to get, you know, some meat from the animals, but you're killing the ocean floor. And I didn't realize, and I didn't know this, when you do that to the ocean floor, it'd be the same thing how you can't breathe without oxygen from the trees. The fish can't really can't live without the oxygen that the coral reefs and the and the sea and the sea plants give off. So what's happening is the fish are dying in droves. The the um they're 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 migrating out of where they're normally supposed to be because it's not habitable for them anymore. And schools like the way the waves come in and like wash stuff away, when schools of fish swim like in the millions, it changes the currency of the ocean and keeps the ocean alive. It like keeps the blood pumping in the ocean. And because we're overfishing because of commercial fishing, we're killing that off. So now the ocean is not moving anymore. It's like kind of looks like, you know, like the blood is just pooling. Like how when a, you know, a fat fucking guy just sits there and he's got to wear those socks up to his knees. Shout out my dad. You got, 
You got it. No, but he's not fat anymore. My dad's losing weight. Good job for you, dad. You're really doing great out there. Um, he, but you got to wear the knees up because the very close veins and all that can pull blood in the ankle and then you can have a heart attack. That's what's happening with the ocean is you got to wear these, these high knee socks to pump the f- blood back up. That's what's happening with the ocean is the blood is pooling because the schools of fish can't swim and pump the blood anymore or make the water move. So... And also the fishermen are scumbags if you read this fact from the movie. Look at this. These are fact from the movie. Much of the capturing is done in Taji, Japan, where from 2000 to 2015, 12, dolf- 12 dolphins were unnecessarily killed for every one dolphin captured. So that's scumbag. And then, hold on. <laughs> ah, I'm Chrissy Allergies, Chrissy Sinusitis, Chrissy Pollens. Um, the fishermen view the dolphins as competition. Okay, they feel that they eat too many fish, and if they get rid of the dolphins, there will be more fish available for them to catch. Essentially, the slaughter of these dolphins is a reaction to the overfishing that is happening in Taji. So you see that, that's what these scumbags are saying. And I didn't even realize this. There's so much plastic in the ocean already, and it's mainly microplastics, that the fish are eating the plastic. So when you eat, when you eat a piece of fish, you're eating plastic. And I didn't realize that at all. And even like me taking the omega-3 fish oil pills, because I thought it was like good for, because I'm Chrissy Cholesterol, Chrissy Cardiovascular Health. The, the, what you really should be eating is just algae because there's no omega-3s in the fish. The fish eat the algae, which then has the omega-3. So it's the middleman. So why are you eating the middleman? Just eat the algae. So I'm going to go into everybody's fish tanks right now and eat their algae. If there was a fish tank in this house right now, I'd eat the fish food and I'd eat the fish algae because I need the Chrissy omega-3s. I need my blood to pump. So, so. In a can of tuna, which we, I thought we were gonna have for lunch, but let's go see it. Okay, this is we're watching this tuna fish can, which of course is no, you know, they've ripped off the label. Ugh. Okay, so he took the tuna fish out, put it on a little microscope thingy. That's plastic. What is plastic? Like the dots? It's not water. Oh my God. That you're just eating and it's just sitting in your body then. Oh, look, why, why does it go to Domino's Pizza then? Oh, now I want Domino's. Um, um, oh, yeah, dude. That's another thing that I learned about. That's another thing that I learned in this documentary is slavery, actual for real 2021 slavery, is what fuels the seafood industry. In these Asian nations, and, and I think it's um, Taiwan. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Thailand. They literally enslave you. They enslave you. Dude, there was a guy who was in the documentary. He was at sea, didn't step foot on land for 12 years. Just boat in the middle of the ocean. Just gun to his head, do it. And they would keep, bot- people would die. They'd throw him overboard. Because when you get back, like, you could be like, oh, the, you know, the fisherman got sick and died. So it's like, there's real slavery happening and in other parts of the country, in other parts of the world. But yet people want to shit on America and say this problem, that problem. It's like, that's all a facade too. That's all to distract you. Like that's, that's not real. Like it's, it, it's not real. There's no slavery here. Everybody is treated. At, listen, there's a lot of people. There's a, millions of people here. Not everyone's going to have a good fucking day. That's just, unfortunately, that's just how life is. You know, when we get to actually, when we get to the 48 laws of power, the, the law we're going to talk about today talks a little bit about that, but when you watch this documentary, you see real, actual, for real slavery happening right now in Thailand. With that's you know that's where they get you know the fishing. Uh, that's where they uh, you know kill all these fish. So, how long could I live on a boat? No, dude. I mean, there's not enough drama mean in the world for me. I could go. I could do a boat for like three hours, and then I'll just puke. I'll puke or like you know, I'll uh, something will happen where like I like being on a boat, but I can't really. I need to be on land. I like I like to sit on land and look at the ocean, but being in the ocean, that's a different story. You know, and I know how to swim, but I just, you know, it's 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 really a terrifying fear to just ever be like alone in the dark ocean. But also I didn't know that salmon, like when you go eat like a farm-raised salmon, for first of all, they think farming salmon is like the answer to like commercial fishing because like then you're not killing the seafloor or whatever. But to feed the salmon, it takes like thousands of pounds of other fish because that's what they eat. So they're just cannibalizing. They're just eating other fish in fish food. No, have you ever been? You went to a fish farm?
Where did you go to a salmon farm? The cat. So when I went to the Chrissy Catskill, shout out. When I went, when I went to, when I went to, well, when I saw the documentary, dude, these salmon farms are disgusting. The lice, it's called sea lice. It literally eats the salmons alive. Like salmons are just swimming around with half their body. They look like Two Face from the Batman movies. Half their face and skin is eaten off by sea lice, and then we kill them, and they just inject pink dye. Salmon are not pink. That's not real. They just inject the dye into it. So, but I'm just starting to feel like, so, what, so now I can't eat chicken, I can't eat beef, I can't eat salmon, but if I eat all the plants, like, will the oxygen go out of the air? What am I supposed to eat? I don't know what to eat. Magic Spoon. Magicspoon.com. Use promo code HeyBabe or magicspoon.com slash HeyBabe or magicspoon.com slash chaos for $5 off. But those are two victims of Earth. Yes. The The animals are the victim of Earth. And we were talking about this too. As human beings, we're just kind of renting the planet. We're just like the flavor of the week because dinosaurs were here for millions of years. Amoeba and protozoa were here for millions of years. You know, we're just here. And we've only been here a couple hundred thousand years. So it's like very likely that like we're not always going to inhabit the planet. And we're just like the dinosaurs got hit by a meteor. It's like there's always like a new beginning. I kind of feel like maybe like we're going to get hit by something or maybe we're overfishing or overkilling because the thing with Seaspiracy was... They really didn't offer a solution, which I was like waiting for like, okay, like how do we fix it? And they're like, yo, dude, like we literally by 20, if we keep it up by 2040, the oceans will be begin to die. And then once they begin to die, that's it. The only thing they said you could do is eat plant-based seafood. And I'm down eating plant-based seafood, but I went on the website today that they said to go on and a pack of plant-based shrimp are $28. So fuck you. I'm going to the supermarket and getting shrimp for $7. I don't care what slaves got to make it. That's so true. No documentary has any solution. It just goes, you're fucked. No solution. No. But it's 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 an interesting thing watching C Spiracy because I'm like, oh wow, like a lot of like why isn't this talked about more? Because it's even the pe- even the agencies, like the rescue agencies that you know talk about like we're getting the plastic out of the ocean and we love animals. They when 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 this director was like talking to them about, like, yeah, but what about commercial sea fishing? They're like, oh, we can't talk about that because they, because they make money off the commercial sea fishing. So it's like, it's all money, dude. It's all fucking money. And how are you going to get a country to stop? How are you going to get a country to stop, you know, with, you know, the commercial sea fishing? They make billions of dollars. Like they hunt this bluefin tuna, which is like legit extinct almost. Like a lot of Asian countries, they hunt bluefin tuna, which is like so much money. It's like $100,000 for a piece of it or some shit like that. Then shark fin soup is a big thing. And shark fin soup, it's got no nutritional value. It, it, it Just in the Asian nations, they think it gives you like some type of good luck. But now you're killing sharks and taking their fins off for no reason whatsoever because of some bullshit folklore. And then I didn't realize that because like off the coast of like Liberia and some West African nations where they're overfishing so much, these people that live there on the coast of Liberia who, who, who have for so many years have been depending on eating the fish, like they go out in little canoes and like fish, like some of them spear fish or even like just with nets, like old school fishing. There's no fish there because the commercial fishing companies have taken it. So they have no choice. They have to now go hunt and eat baboon and bats. And that causes Ebola and COVID and all because they're eating bush meat. So it's very easy for us in America to be like, why would these people eat that bush meat? It's like, there's no food. Like if, 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 if there was no all of a sudden no fish or no food in your freaking local Trader Joe's or bullshit supermarkets, you would eat your dog. You would start eating. You would eat your pets. Dude, I'd eat Vinny. It's, I'm eating two people. Yeah, maybe that's the meteor. Yeah, yeah, that maybe that is the meteor. Yeah, but anyway, you want to cut to TT for a minute? We'll go answer. Yeah, some- I, yeah. Let's do let's do a question from TT because I love doing this and I like that I don't know the questions ahead of time, so I like to just just listen to them. Welcome to Mel Time. It's TT Jerry's time, guys. Hey, hi guys. Welcome to TT Jerry's mailbox. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, the first question for you, TT, is um, people wanted to know what you think of cryptocurrency. Of uh, what? Have you ever heard of Bitcoin? Oh yeah, I heard of Bitcoin, but I was trying to get into that, but I don't trust that. I don't know. I think it's kind of a scam in a way. I mean, if you really got to have money to put 
into Bitcoin. You just can't put like, you know, you really got to have know somebody and really, really know about this. Because if not, those take your money. They'll rob you for your money. Yeah, I feel like it's yeah. just a, a scheme. Yeah, it is. That's how I feel about it. It's, I don't know. For me, it's not worth it. So you you're no on Bitcoin? No. <laughs> no. Um now I rather keep my money, make sure it's safe before I lose all my money. <laughs> so we have another question here. Um they're saying since Vinny's carrying the weight of oh one minute. Let me read Tim Dillon's Aunt Kathleen wrote, Now that Vinny is carrying the weight of Chris's unborn child's head, uh, how does it feel to be the hottest one in the family? How does it feel to be the hottest one in the family? Like to who? The the one that she's having? Like they're saying now that um now that Vinny's pregnant, you're now the hottest one in the family. How does it feel? Oh, how does it feel? It feels great. I mean, I'm I know I'm one of the hottest in the family right now because I'm taking over. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> but no, I feel good. It feels good to be home and be with the family, you know? It must it yeah. feels good, yeah. Um, where did the nickname TT come from? TT, that was Vinny. Vinny gave me that name. Really? When? Yes. Vinny gave me um TT Jerry. When? How long ago? That was like she's. That was not too long ago. Really? And she do you like me, it? Yeah, it, it fits me because I'm like an aunt and an uncle. So my nephew sometimes they call me TT when I'm dressed like you know like a girl, and when I'm dressed like a boy they call me Theo. So to make it easy, they just call me TT Theo. Oh. I mean, they used to call me like that for a long time, but Vinny came up with that for, to do the broadcast and all that, put it on Instagram, call me TT Jerry. It's great. I love it. Yeah. And make sure you put the mic really close. Uh-huh. Sorry. Here we go again, again with this mic. <laughs> <laughs> so that same person, uh, they actually wrote, do you know that TT in Filipino means penis? Oh, really? Oh, that's interesting. That's amazing. I like that. <laughs> it fits me then. It really does. It really fits me, T.T. Jerry. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I like that. I like the UFOs. You like the UFOs? What would yeah. you do to an alien? Yeah. It, it is like an alien. What would you do if you met an alien? Oh, my God. I would go with them. I would take, take me for a ride. <laughs> if a UFO comes and lands somewhere and I'm there... I would tell them, take me for a ride. I don't care. Hell with my life. If it ends, it ends. If they bring me down, they bring me back. But it's something that I would love to experience. I think you, you would know? end up being their leader. Maybe I would. Thank you, guys. This is Titi, um, Jerry's Mailbag. I appreciate all your guys, all your comments. You guys are so beautiful. Thank you. And I hope you continue to support me. I want to see myself grow up in this. And show more love to you guys. And I just hope you be there for me and support me and everything. Thank you guys for everything. I love you. Bye. Okay. I mean, TT is just, I mean, just TT. I just love TT. And I'm telling you, dude, I'm telling you, it's starting to get to the point now where from far away, I don't know who's who. I don't know who's TT and who's Vinny. And I kind of like, I'm starting not to care. It's like, Whoever's closest, I'll grab. No, my dream is to have you two in a buddy cop film. Me and TT, it will happen. It will happen. And the, the I'm telling you, some of my peers are starting to already finance movies because, like, it's it's start it, it's it's becoming a beautiful thing. Like I said, like I almost I almost feel like we're part of this thing where it's like Bane, where it's like giving the power back to the people. Like a Tim Dillon is like already going to start talking about like financing his own movies from the money he's making on Patreon. It's like. We're all a part of it. Like, that's how I feel. So, like, patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. Like, we're beginning to, like, be like, okay, th- we're moving forward as a family, as a group here. And it's like, we're going to start just making our own shit. Like, we will make, we will make, and it will be sponsored by the fans. And I can only do this with the help of the fans. So, thank you so much for your support. I love it. We will make a buddy cop film with me and T.T. Jerry as long as, she, as long as she stays off crack and out of prison. We will make that, and it will be financed by you, our fans. So, I love it. Um... So I want to get to the 48 laws of power. Dude, this law that I just read was wild. First of all, it's law 32. And the law is play to people's fantasies. Judgment. The truth is often avoided because it is ugly. 
and unpleasant. Never appeal to truth and reality unless you are prepared for the anger that comes from the disenchantment. Life is so harsh and distressing that people who can manufacture romance or conjure up fantasy are like oasises in the desert. Everyone flocks to them. There is great power in tapping into the fantasy of the masses. And I kind of feel like we're in the fantasy of the masses now. Like there's a lot of fantasies that the media and social media put forward where it's like, this ain't reality, baby. This is a fantasy and people buy into it big, big, big time. I, I, there was one, one here. Oh, if here's what I saw. If, um, such power is the power of fantasies that take root in us, especially in times of scarcity and decline. People rarely, rarely believe that their problems arise from their own misdeeds and stupidity. Someone or something out there is to blame. The other, the world, the gods. And so salvation comes from the outside as well. So that's what people do constantly. You never really hear people anymore say, take responsibility for their life being fucked up. It's, oh, I didn't get a win in life. Immediately, I'm a victim. Immediately, you will find whatever victim train suits you. Whatever it is. It, there's, there, now, there, now vic, it's like pick whatever victimhood train you want to get on, there's a victim for everybody now. You could be a victim no matter what you look like. So it doesn't matter. Meghan Markle's a victim. <laughs> a fucking princess is a victim. So you, whatever you want to be, whatever, you, you know, victim, go ahead. You can find it. And that's where we're in right now is because it's all distracting. Oh, no, no, no. It's not my problem. This happened to me. That happened to me. Oh, pushing my problems further and further and further and away as you drive further and further, further into your phone and other technologies. It's scary. And do I have an answer? No. <laughs> Here's the reality, folks. What 48 Laws of Power says, Law 32. Here's the reality. Change is slow and gradual. It requires hard work, a bit of luck, a fair amount of self-sacrifice and a lot of patience. That's the reality. The fantasy is a sudden transformation will bring a total change in one's fortunes, bypassing work, luck, self-sacrifice, and time in one fantastic stroke. It ain't gonna happen, kid. You, unfortunately, I think to really make it in this world, you're gonna have somebody really close to you you're gonna have to like end of uh, uh, you're gonna have to like get into a fight with a family member or end a relationship for some reason, and then to get rich, you're gonna have to do something crazy that people think you're fucking nuts for even attempting. This is the truth. It's just not easy. It's just very very difficult to make it in this world. And look, you have to find happiness. Happiness comes from within. You gotta whatever point you're at in life, you gotta just make your goals attainable, and you have to understand that really. The, the beauty of life is not in achieving your goals, it's in the journey to get there. That's what I've learned so much is really all the things that are happening are happening now. Whether I reach my big goals, whatever, it's all happening now. My kids are in the pool, homeless pimps here. My life is fine. And I would have said my life is fine five years ago, you know, or 10 years ago before I had my children and my family, I could have found happiness in that. So it's just finding a little happy points along the way because life is mostly a bag of shit with a few happy points in the middle. <laughs> Here's the truth. Here's the reality from 48 Laws of Power. Society is fragmented and full of conflict. The fantasy, people can come together in a mystical union of souls. So I feel like all these ideas of this utopian society and the communism and we can all stand as one, it's bullshit. It's just bullshit. Most people, here's the truth, honey. Most people are just really not racist. Most people are not sexist. Most people are decent people. There are people out there who are scum and have lived lives and went through things that maybe you and I haven't went through that have made them, have made the chemistry in their brains make them act like a certain way that's not nice. And it's really just, it, that's a low percentage of people. Majority of people are just good people. But the media and social media and the powers that be don't want you to believe that. Charles Barkley, if we can put this up, Charles Barkley just said on, uh, well, he said it last week on TBS, he talked about how most people, He's like, most black people and white people are good people and they're not racist and they're just fine with each other. And I see that actually in stand-up comedy. When most people are in a room together, 
they're just laughing in unison no matter what they look like or sound like. It's only when you turn on the news do you think everybody hates each other and wants to kill each other. It's, it's a fragmented reality that the news needs to put out there so you keep buying the tickets and clicking their links and watching their TV shows. So it's very, very scary, but it's kind of like, you know, you're just going to have to rise up and understand, like, just try to be... Here's the thing. I'm like an optimistic nihilist where it's like, I kind of know that there's nothing I can do to stop it, but at least I know that it's happening. I could just be happy and just eat pizza and just whatever. It's fine. <laughs> you know? I mean, the news is just a podcast by assholes. That's what it is. The news is just a fucking asshole podcast. Here's the reversal of, of, of this 48 law. I always like to do the reversal of law 32, um, which law 32 says um, play to people's fantasies. Here's the reversal. If there is power in tapping into the fantasies of the masses, there is also danger. Fantasy usually contains an element of play. The public half realize it's being duped, but it keeps the dream alive anyway, relishing the entertainment and the temporary diversion from the everyday that you are providing. So keep it light. Never come too close to the place where you are actually expected to produce results. That place may prove extremely hazardous. So it's a nice fucking balance of how you got to play to people's fantasies, but also let them know like, hey, I'm a bullshitter. Um, which that's what this podcast is. Well, that kind of reminds me of the history thing you wanted to do. Oh, yeah, dude. Dude, this guy, this guy that we found today for the Chris Reed DiStefano segment is, I mean, mind-blowing guy. This person, his name is, and I just forgot what his name was. Hold on. Hold on. His name is, um, his name is uh, 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 Joshua Norton. No relation to Jim. Joshua <laughs> Norton, dude. This guy, who, by the way, was brought to my attention by the great James Mattern, Joshua Norton, also known as Emperor Norton, was a citizen of San Francisco, California, who proclaimed himself the Emperor of the United States in 1859. He's kind of like the first meme because he proclaimed himself Emperor to the public and the media loved it and started writing about him saying, oh, Emperor Norton, Emperor Norton. Dude, he would make public declarations that were wild. Like he said in the city of San Francisco, if you called it Frisco, it was a $25,000 fine. That's what he said. He was like, <laughs> fuck you, no, it's a fine. He was like one of the first like schizophrenics like to ever like gain fame. He was like the original like Donald Trump. I think he might be the original Elon Musk. Look at this. Look, he, well, he is the original Elon Musk. He grew up in South Africa. That's a fun fact about him. He grew up in South Africa, and he was originally from England, but when England tried to colonize South Africa and kind of like, they would just send English people down there and be like, hey, just go teach them how to be white. That's pretty much what England would say, oh. is go be white, which is, <laughs> you know, sad, but that's just the truth. Is what England wants to say whatever they want about South Africa. They just sent loads of people down there and be like, make this place more white. <laughs> You know, and now, thank God, it's not that white. So it's like, it's good because, well, it kind of is, I guess, mostly white. When you think of South Africa, it's mostly white. I don't know. I've never been to South Africa. Oh, TT said her dream is to go. And I to said, South Africa? I said, we should all go. I mean, we're going to South Africa. Now we're going to South Africa. <laughs> I've never been to South Africa. I'm going with TT. Vinny's staying home. Um, <laughs> he lost, uh, uh, Joshua Norton lost a lot of money on rice. Around 1849, Norton was drawn in from the lush lands of South Africa to the, in the home of Tesla to the city he would be forever linked to. This was due to a large inheritance of $40,000, around a million dollars in today's money left by his father. After turning that into a larger sum, thanks to the real estate market, sounds very Trumpy, Norton got it in his head to turn a short-lived rice famine into big bucks. When China stopped shipping, he bought a boatload of Peruvian rice, hoping to cash in on the price spike. Unfortunately, many more shipments of rice came pouring in and the price dropped. Norton tried to re renege on his contract, but the courts wouldn't have it. This could have been the event that pushed him over the edge. Rice does that to some people. Okay, Norton also had his own currency. So he had like, he had his own fucking money. Dude, was he a time traveler? Dude, he was a time traveler. This kid had his own money. He had his own, it was like, yeah, he had his own cryptocurrency, but he had his own for real currency. Once proclaiming himself the emperor of the United States, he attempted to make sweeping changes to the way our country operated. Of course, nobody outside San Francisco acknowledged these changes. He was hard pressed to get anyone here to do so either, but he quickly became a beloved icon so much that his self-made currency called Norton's Notes was actually accepted by the shops he frequently visited. That's sick. That's so he, would, he got people to accept his own money. Dude, this is playing into the fantasies. Norton is perfect for, for Law 32. Wow. He declared war on the U.S. Congress, which is what we'd all like to do now because the stimmy sucked. <laughs> Norton's impotent position, he didn't resist. 
Uh, despite Norton's impotent position, he didn't resist making bold statements. Long before it became popular, he was crying out for the overthrow of Congress. He had no military force, and the U.S. Army ignored his letters. But his unbashed outrage is still inspiring San Francisco rebels to this day. Of course, no one is saying you should declare war on Congress, but a little civil disobedience is good for the soul. I mean, he did everything that happened in 2020. He literally is the leader of Antifa. <laughs> He's either the leader of Antifa or the Proud Boys, but this guy was born in the wrong era. I mean, this guy should be nicknamed Paulie Protest. <laughs> he spearheaded the building of a bridge and tunnel. The great emperor lacked any true power, sadly. Despite his many innovative ideas, he was often known for demanding that a tunnel and bridge be built across San Francisco Bay, a necessity even back then. But local officials turned a cold shoulder to our imperial hero, but like many visionaries, he had to die before the rest of society could catch up. Today, we enjoy the San Francisco-Oakland Bridge and the Trans Bay Tube. Some say the bridge should be renamed the Emperor Norton Bridge. I think so. I would I would be willing to sign a petition to rename this the Emperor Norton Bridge. So I just thought Emperor Joshua Norton was a nice Chris Christory De Stefano segment because he fit nice into the uh, you know laws of power. And I just think he'd be a perfect guy today. And he probably could he probably could win an election today. Yeah, he just manipulated the media. That's what it is. He, he manipulated the media. Um, by the way, tomorrow, and you guys will hear about it, uh, we'll talk about it on the Patreon, but tomorrow I'm going on the Megyn Kelly show, and the flyer is me and Candace Owens. <laughs> so I'm going on the Megyn Kelly show tomorrow. We'll talk about next week on the regular Chris Cass episode how it went, um, but I'm excited to do the Megyn Kelly show. I think she's actually like, I've always had like a crush on Megyn Kelly. <laughs> so uh, Vinny's in the pool. I've always had a crush on Megyn Kelly, so it's like pretty awesome. Um but uh, that'll be fun. And I really appreciate all the support we're getting here at our Chrissy Chaos. Remember, email questions and videos of anything you want to say to us to Chrissy Chaos Podcast at gmail.com. Chrissy Chaos Podcast at gmail.com. We'll put it on the screen. Email those questions and those videos. We want the fans to be more part of the show. Of course, patreon.com slash Christy Comedy, where so much fun happens to Christians. We have so much fun. Uh, you know, we really put a lot of uh, effort into that and we love, the, you know, we're, being part of the community, you know, it's just so important. I think like we live in a time where like I want the fans to dictate, you know, what I'm doing in my career. And that's what we do at patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. And I'm coming live to your city, ChristyComedy.com. Come check us out. We got Nashville. We got Providence, Rhode Island, Boston, Massachusetts, Eatontown, New Jersey. It's a big one. Come to Eatontown, Christy East Coast. Um, and we'll be out. Uh, oh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We'll be there. Also, well, Waukegan, Illinois. Waukegan. Also, uh, we're, for Patreon, we're going to film a walkthrough of this house. Yes, we're going to do a Chrissy Cribs, MTV Cribs, Chrissy Cribs, only at patreon.com slash Chrissy Comedy. If you want to see the house and steal shit, sign up and uh, stage a heist. So thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Telling a friend helps us out so much. I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Also, at Chrissy Chaos Podcast at gmail.com. Email a video or a question of what you want improved in the podcast and a segment you'd like to see or anything else, a guest, whatever you guys want to do. We really appreciate it. I love it. Uh, I'm going to go jump in the pool with this shirt on and uh, see if Vinny's going to... I, I want to see how long I could stay underwater just to practice, just to practice Vinny getting me drunk and trying to kill me in this pool. All right, good night.